Raise your hand if you suffer or know someone who suffer from food allergies. I do too. This is my younger sister, Rachel, and here she is the day that changed my family's life. Just shy of her second birthday, Rachel took a small bite of a cashew and experienced a life-threatening anaphylactic reaction. Until that day, I never knew someone could die from a nut. On that day, my family's outlook and dynamic changed instantly. Rachel's safety became our first priority. We had to read every label of every bite of food that passed her lips. We had to scrutinize everything in her world, not just what she ate, but everything she came in contact with. Soap, shampoo, sunblock, even bug repellent. Rachel and I could no longer go to the zoo and simply feed the animals without first finding the zookeeper to find the ingredients on the feed. When my family traveled, we had to research airlines that were sensitive to people with food allergies and always had to take the first flight of the day to hopefully ensure the cleanest airplane. Eating at restaurants, social and school functions were a source of anxiety for my entire family. Rachel also faced emotional challenges. Once in her school cafeteria, she was chased around by a classmate carrying a peanut butter sandwich, screaming, I want to see your face blow up. Rachel had to grow up quickly. Now imagine if you lived every day with the mindset that food, which is the focus of most social occasions and is meant to nourish your body, could make you sick or Take your life. Rachel is not alone. Look to your left. Now look to your right. One in every 25 adults and one in every 13 children suffer from food allergies. I've always been a big sister advocate and looked out for Rachel at birthday parties, schools, and restaurants. And as I matured, so did my voice. When I was a freshman, I joined my school's Youth and Government Club, and we were asked to write a piece of legislation for youth assembly. There was no doubt in my mind that this bill would serve as a vehicle to express my passion for students with food allergies. After being awarded best bill in the house, I realized that I had the potential to make a change. I was driven to raise the profile of this public safety issue, and my mission became abundantly clear. Provide allergen and nutrition information for all items offered in public school cafeterias. Although the solution seemed simple, I faced obstacles from all fronts. My challenge, one small 13-year-old voice to communicate a compelling argument to overworked, underfunded adult decision makers. I was rejected by both local and state government officials who felt I had a great idea, but immediately responded, who is going to pay for this? Money and liability stood in my way. I learned quickly how to cultivate new ideas in the culture that rewards the status quo. I learned about the power of passion. My first step was to approach a national food allergy organization for guidance and support. I sat in their Madison Avenue offices where leadership looked me in the eyes and told me my goal was commendable, yet virtually impossible. I did not see this as a failure. In fact, my determination intensified. Pursuing my passion required persistence, patience, and diplomacy. I learned public policy 101, strive to elicit change rather than impose it. While it's critical to affect change supported by facts and figures, people of all ages must connect to and embrace the idea. Passion is the key. 
I spent countless nights working at the computer, leading conference calls from my school's guidance office during my lunch, and traveling to meetings before, during, and after school. I led a grassroots campaign, working with my school district's nutrition director and addressing the local chamber of commerce and school board. Next, I worked with a company to develop software and convince my school board to launch a pilot in my home school district comprised of 18,000 students. After one month, 8,000 hits and endless emails, meetings, and conference calls, the movement gained support and energy. State legislators came on board and invited me to address our tri-county legislative delegation. With the hundreds of business cards I gathered, I formed a coalition of statewide and national organizations with similar missions. I also gained the support of members of the medical and education communities and legislators. Again, the movement gained momentum. I was invited to serve as a Senate page in Tallahassee, which was the perfect opportunity to increase awareness about the importance of food allergy management. I lobbied the President of the Senate in front of the chambers, met with the Commissioner of Agriculture, and the Governor. I literally ran across the Capitol complex barefoot. Heels are a definite obstacle to lobbying. <laughs> I continue to face the delicate balance act of uniting opposing forces. I had to demonstrate how my idea was operationally feasible in a state comprised of 67 school districts with a wide range of budgets and resources. I had to convince legislators from districts that derive revenue and campaign contributions from the dairy industry that disclosing contains milk is intended to save lives, not to hurt their constituents' business interests. My voice echoed in the Capitol. The Senate issued a proclamation in support of National Food Allergy Awareness Week. The Department of Agriculture introduced guidelines which provide allergen and nutrition information, benefiting Florida's three million students. Rachel can now safely enjoy the cafeteria with her friends. My passion prevailed. A year after my initial encounter on Madison Avenue, the same organization awarded me their National Food Allergy Innovation Award. I was also invited to address their National Teen Summit to share my success and inspire other teens to follow their passion. My goal is to expand upon Florida's success as a model for the nation. I'm currently working with members of Congress and senators to collaborate with federal agencies such as the USDA, FDA, and CDC. Just last week, I had the privilege to lobby on Capitol Hill and discuss national school nutrition policy. I met with numerous legislators who envisioned providing allergen and nutrition information as an opportunity to benefit all students, including those who suffer from food allergies, obesity, and other diet-related illnesses. As I raise the profile of this emerging epidemic, more and more people have embraced my story. It is featured in Allergic Living magazine and Safe Kids Worldwide blog. Ironically, as the initiative strengthened, so did Rachel's health. She now suffers minor food sensitivities, and my family no longer lives in fear. Rachel's good fortune has intensified my resolve to serve as a voice for the six million students who still suffer from food allergies. Within the past three years, I've learned from firsthand experience that everyone's story matters. No voice is too small. 
We can use our skills, motivation, and persistence to effect a change. What started as a labor of love developed into a federal initiative fueled by the power of passion. <laughs>